Hello, everyone. Welcome to DevCon 5. And welcome to Japan. Konnichiwa, um, minasan. Yokoso, DevCon 5. Yokoso, minasan. Um, to be honest, when we were deciding on the location of DevCon this year, I wasn't really sure about bringing this to Japan. Um, I know many of the community members wanted like this to be in Japan, but selfishly, I thought it, that that would you know give me extra pressure because I am from here. But now that we are all here, I am excited that uh, our community members are here to have meaning, meaningful conversations and showcase what you have built this year and also discuss the future of ECM. So today, uh, the topic of my talk is about growing the way we support um, related to what we have been communicating. So for those um, who have heard my talks or others, we know that we often talked about this subtraction mindset. It's the idea that um, normally the typical organizations, they tend to um, uh, take and also extend. But Ethereum tries to share its influence and also resources so that everyone can grow. And I introduced this building subtraction last year at DevCom, but there is more to this subtraction. Just, it's, it's beyond just positive feelings or just a philosophy. It is a discipline. Subtraction does not mean EF is doing less, nor working less than before. Subtraction is about disciplined action. That is why it is different from minimalism. We are subtracting our power in a mindful way for the long-term benefit of Ethereum. Like artisan or artwork, the work requires, um, uh, has to be precise. And once we overdo it, even if the decision is not bad, it's hard to fix it later. This work re requires keen intuition and thoughtfulness, but we still want to um, take some risk and also encourage innovations. So with all these, we actually have to work more to subtract our power. Here's a key insight of Ethereum uh, that guides how EF grows. The word that stands out in my mind is support. We have to give flexible support to support this a uh, very unique ecosystem, and growing the ways we support is our main focuses um, this year. And many of you know that EF supports through grants. This is a list of grantees this year, 2019, and congratulations to all of the grantees that are on the list. But we don't just support by, project, by looking at project. We sometimes we give support uh, for the entire domain, um, such as how do we support multiple teams that are working on the Ethereum 2.0 clients, or state channels, and so on. And in the middle, I listed security, because that's also deserved to be one of the domains and of course, without core infrastructure, uh, Ethereum cannot work, and there are uh, teams that are working so hard to maintain and also improve it. And going further, as part of being flexible, we sometimes support uh, like incubating some project to, for them to be kicked, kicked off, and and also support many communities and help Ethereum reach beyond blockchain. And I like to mention one as an example, Ethereum.org is run by multiple community members working very, very hard every day 
And I hope you are enjoying weekly updates that are happening now. And also, they just implemented um, 10 extra translation, uh, 10 languages um, that translated by all the community members globally that volunteer to do this. And that is really, I think, very beautiful about this Ethereum ecosystem. So really, congratulations to the team of uh, the website. So as you can see, there are many types of support to increase our flexibility. Our grants program has gone into an ecosystem support program now. We continue to provide financial support for those who deserve it, but we try to think about like, other ways to support by thinking, what are the things that only the Ethereum Foundation can do? So this is the website of the ecosystem support program. Please check it out. And so far, I just showed what we have been doing, but it also matters why we have been doing this way. And if you want to listen to the details, Alba is going to give a talk 5 p.m. tomorrow. So please come and join us tomorrow. And I just spoke about what EF is doing. And as we are continue to make these efforts with other community members, we see big Ethereum news coming in every day, but uh, the gloss is happening. Here are some chart that you can easily show the gloss with numbers. And every day we hear like different news happening, uh, especially lately, sometimes from uh, big enterprise side. But um, it's, it's been exciting um, despite the price of all the crypto. And, and with all these growth, I still think it comes down to why we are doing this, uh, we are working on Ethereum. And it is important for us to keep talking about this. And there is my personal story that led to my own vision of Ethereum outside of my career. This is this is my dad and me as a baby. Um, I was born and raised in Japan, and my dad was a little stubborn and <laughs> difficult. He was successful in his career, but unlike many other Japanese, he never trusted those who has a title as experts. So he told me, just because someone has a title as a doctor, that doesn't mean what they're saying is right. So I learned from him that, I, you know, to to question everything and to do your own research before making any decision. And also, also things were not equal for women here, but still not, unfortunately. And I did not think many things were not uh, fair, but were fair to everyone. So I became more sensitive to unfairness, injustice, and imbalance. My core values remain the same today, standing here. And I would like to see the world that where we have less unfairness, imbalance, injustice. And I believe blockchain can help that. And that's the vision we do not want to forget. And one of the important purposes of this DevCon is to share our vision, your own vision, and also uh, inspiration. And, and discuss why we're working on Ethereum. And with that, this year, we welcome 52 scholars from 25 countries. The list is here. <laughs> and also supported by a consensus, consensus and UNICEF Innovation, so thank you so much. Um, and there was an application process, and criteria was whether they represent the gender, ethnicity, or region that are normally underrepresented in tech, and also the needs of financial support for their learning, and of course, their passion in learning Ethereum. The passion of these members is very inspiring. Uh, I heard a story about a scholar from 
Egypt, uh, she wanted to learn about Ethereum, but it's, it was really hard for her to know where to start as a Muslim woman. And so coming here is really a big deal for her as a learning process. And also there was another person who is a refugee from Syria, uh, living in Berlin. He wants to learn about Ethereum to find a way to empower other refugees. And also, for them to come all the way to Japan wasn't really easy, um, like, like, you know, compared to many of you, or even, like, of course, me uh, being, being Japanese. Um, some, um, some scholars from Af Afghanistan, they couldn't get a visa at their local place, and they had to fly all the way to Dubai and wait there for days for the visa to come. And, and we, we had to keep supporting them um, by, by wiring, <laughs> wiring money with Western Union, which kind of showed the, the problem of the, the, the we have in this society. But, but it, is really, it was really hard for them to come here, but the depression shows that they, this, this is a life-changing opportunity for them. So I really encourage you to find them, to talk to them. They are supposed to have orange wristband. And the reason why we, we do this is not just to help them. Um, I think um, the more importantly, I want them to inspire us. And eventually, we can learn from them. The real interesting use cases of Ethereum are happening in the areas where solving problems in front of them would change their life immediately. So we are not only doing this to help them, I believe actually they will help us to find ways to use Ethereum more. And last but not least, uh, speaking of our region, today we have a big, great, big news to tell you uh, from the community actually. But, so just today, UNICEF announced crypto denominated fund to support open source technology, benefiting children and the future of the children, and EF is supporting this initiative as a first partner. Thank you so much. Uh, this, I think uh, this, this is something new that we are doing. Of course, we have many other priorities. We do not forget that, but this, this is really important for us to um, share, our, share our vision, and, and the UNICEF Innovation team has been working so hard. I was receiving updates every single day last couple of months, especially, <laughs> and I was just exhausted by hearing that. <laughs> but you, you can imagine how hard it is to, when I heard about this idea, you, you, you know, imagine doing this at, at one big organization at United Nations, which is normally very conservative. Um, so they, they did a lesson teaching how to, first starting with what is crypto and then how to use wallet and to, to really advocate. And what's great is they really, they really believe in the power of crypto, crypto, not just blockchain, not just as a currency. So this is why this is crypto denominated fund which is, I think, very, very revolutional. So how it works is, for example, we provide ETH, and, and they, they provide Ether as Ether to support these startups they are supporting. Those startups are the, the startups that are uh, working on their own problems in their own regions using blockchain. Plus crypto is the one that is uh, doing like a digital prescription uh, using blockchain solution. And, um, and there are the other, other projects, that one, one is Utop Pixar is working on DAO, a sort of DAO solution, and the, the, the last one is working on the funding solution with using blockchain. And, oh, sorry. <laughs> so, what, it, what is exciting about this part is, it's a small start. Um, you know, the, the, 
the donation, we actually, yes, we successfully sent, am I supposed to be able to say this? <laughs> there are many things I'm not supposed to say because they're a big organization. But um, we were supposed to be able to successfully send um, 100 ETH to UNICEF plans wore it, and then they distributed to the headquarter, and then the headquarter distributed to, to, to this, all this uh, project already. That happened last night. <laughs> so it, is, it was really a lot of work, and then really congratulations to the team, uh, Chris Fabian, Christina, and all the UNICEF Innovation team who's been working on this territory. And then thank you for letting us be part of this. And I think this was a perfect way to kick off uh, DevCon. Lastly, we are not just in Japan, we are in Osaka. Who are here for the first time? <laughs> so I don't know how many of you have recognized Osaka is a very unique city in Japan. And actually, it is a city known for comedians. This city produced most number of comedians. So if you talk to a random stranger on the street, they're supposed to say something funny. <laughs> so try that. Uh, but anyway, there are many, many interesting that you can try here, many interesting food, okonomiyaki, takoyaki, which I love. And, and also, I'd like to thank, uh, uh, send big thank you to the city of Osaka that provides us this opportunity, but also that just gave us this beautiful drum performance this morning. And thank you very much, Osaka City. OK, that is all for me. And hope you enjoy DevCon and hope to talk to you.